February 2024 was a little bit poo for new VR games. The ones I was most excited for fell a bit flat, with perceived heavy hitters like Stranger Things VR not living up to expectations, and massively anticipated games like Max Mustard and Madison VR getting pushed back to the following month. So, hopefully, March 2024 can salvage things and put us back onto the right track. Today, we have 12 new VR games to look at, ranging from colourful platformers to terrifying horror experiences, a top-quality VR battle royale, and a game about mowing lawns. March is a wildly varied month for new VR games, and hopefully there will be something here for everyone. Let's get straight into this and check out everything launching over the next four weeks. On the 1st of March, Caveman Studios are opening the floodgates and allowing everyone into the open beta for the upcoming VR Battle Royale Contractors Showdown. And let me just say, this game is something very special indeed. I've been sinking time into the closed betas every weekend and I genuinely believe the devs have a huge hit on their hands here. It's a polished and satisfying to play Battle Royale that's been built from the ground up for VR. Guns feel fantastic, the visuals are brilliant, Movement is slick, the map is exciting, and there are countless unlockables from skins to weapon attachments that will keep players returning time and time again. If you've been craving a Warzone style experience in VR, then get involved with the open beta this March, and then stay excited for the game's full release on Quest and PC VR this year. My only hope is that we can eventually get full crossplay between Quest, PC VR, and PS VR 2. If they can get this game on all systems and let us play together, the staying power for Showdown could be genuinely unstoppable, a killer app for every platform. The original Swarm still holds a very special place in my heart. It was one of the first VR games where the devs took a chance on my small VR channel and gave me access ahead of launch, allowing me to play and capture content in time for release day and embargo lift. I loved the game, and I was instantly captivated by the fast-paced Spider-Man-style web-swinging action blended with the over-the-top shooting and roguelike elements. It was a pure action game through and through, and perfect for short, intense sessions. The sequel, aptly named Swarm 2 looks to bring more of that signature chaos to bigger, brighter, and more intense levels with new abilities, weapons, and enemies to destroy. But most importantly, it's also bringing the exceptionally designed movement systems from the original game that meant players could experience the high-octane action without feeling motion sickness. Honestly, swinging around at high speeds like Spider-Man whilst shooting enemies and zipping about in all directions sounds like the perfect recipe for motion sickness. But somehow, the devs behind the original managed to make the entire thing completely painless to play, even for VR newbies, and they're boasting that same lack of motion sickness with the sequel. We don't have long to wait to see if that claim is true, however, as Swarm 2 is launching next week on the 7th of March. The Pirate Queen, A Forgotten Land is an award-winning VR narrative adventure for Quest and PC VR, starring none other than Lucy Liu. Climb aboard an authentically recreated 19th century Chinese pirate ship, explore moonlit cabins, unearth treasure, and embark on a journey to become the most powerful pirate of all time. Now, originally when I heard about this game, I thought it was a VR movie or short film. It wasn't until recently that I realized it's actually a playable VR adventure game, and now my excitement has peaked, especially as the game boasts a narrative-first approach. It's apparently not your typical action-packed pirate game, and is instead a rich, immersive storytelling experience designed to captivate story seekers and history enthusiasts alike. If you're a fan of narrative-driven adventures that take place in real-world locations and lovingly recreated historical moments, then the Pirate Queen should tick all the boxes for you when it launches on the 7th of March. Stilt is a super colourful first-person VR platformer that attaches stilts to the player's arms and challenges them to manoeuvre their way through various environments by bouncing and springing themselves around. However, I'd say these look more like pogo sticks than stilts. Players must use their quick reflexes and problem-solving skills to progress through the levels, collecting lost packages and stamps along the way, or while navigating the world with a pair of stilts for arms. VR devs really do keep finding unique movement systems for players, and I am all for it. We need more wacky movement-focused platformers in VR where our hands are replaced with bizarre everyday objects. Give me a game where my arms are now plungers and I have to use suction cups to clamber all over the world, or perhaps a game where my hands are 
bombs that regrow every time they detonate and the only way to move around is to explode yourself into a specific direction. I'm filled with great ideas. Stilt launches on PC VR, Quest App Lab and PSVR 2 on the 8th of March. My favourite VR city builder is breaking away from the Quest platform and launching onto PSVR 2 this month, complete with all the post-launch content and updates that have expanded and grown the game into a must-have VR title. It's certainly not the most in-depth city builder. Little Cities instead opts for a relaxing and accessible approach to this classic genre, and it does away with all the stress and micromanagement of games like City Skylines and Sim City. Instead of running intricate, well thought out water, sewage and electricity lines across your cities, the systems have been simplified to make organising and creating a functioning city much easier for players of all ages and skill levels. Little Cities really is a VR game that anyone can pick up, play, understand and enjoy in all almost no time at all. And then the hours will evaporate before your eyes. The first time I played Little Cities I completely lost track of time. It was light outside when the headset went on and dark when the headset came off. So buyer beware, this one is a deadly time sink. If you loved Lemmings or Choo Choo Rocket, then Humanity is the game for you. This wacky artistic puzzle game launched onto PSVR 2 and PC VR last year, but it's now making the leap to standalone Quest devices and bringing its addictive gameplay loop, extensive campaign and level editor along with it. The premise of this one is simple. You have to guide a large group of humans towards a certain point within each level in as few moves as possible whilst also manoeuvring over or around the obstacle in each course, and also considering whether it's worth grabbing any collectibles in the arena. As the levels progress they get weirder and more difficult, but the vibe of the entire game is exceptionally chilled out, with a simplistic art style and some extremely catchy music throughout the journey. Humanity is definitely weird, wonderful and unlike anything else available in VR right now. It won't be for everyone, but I'd highly recommend you check it out if you're a fan of puzzle games and unique experiences. Paint the Town Red might just be the most violent and gruesome VR game I've ever seen, but the devs have cleverly made everyone in it a cube-headed Minecraft person, which means despite faces exploding into hundreds of bloody chunks, impact damage that reveals muscle and bone, and the ability to slice big sections of enemies' heads off, the entire thing still looks kind of cutesy and adorable. Honestly, it's a genius move, because if this was hyper-realistic, I doubt it would even manage to get an official Quest Store release. The original flat screen version of Paint the Town Red was hugely popular online when it released, with countless YouTube videos driving the interest upwards, and now the entire thing has been converted into a blood soaked VR experience for a new audience. Gameplay wise, it's very similar to Drunken Bar Fight, Gorn, or Blade and Sorcery. It's a pure combat simulator that lets you use whatever you can get your hands on to dispatch large groups of enemies and ultimately cover the arenas you're fighting in with a love red hue. My must-play new VR game of March 2024 is definitely this gorgeous, colourful, Astrobot-style VR platformer, Max Mustard. It's a brand new VR IP that's looking to nail the classic third-person platforming formula in virtual reality for Quest owners. And from all the gameplay and trailers I've seen so far, they look set to succeed with flying colours. Third-person platforming games work so well in VR if executed properly. Moss and Astrobot are two of the very best VR games that money can buy, and they're perfect examples of how to tackle this genre in VR. It looks like developers Toast Inc. have poured a lot of thought and love into the design of Max Mustard. From the titular character to the enemies and the levels themselves, everything is brimming with personality, and I can't wait to blast my way through this adventure on the 21st of March. Fingers crossed the Quest Store launch is successful, and the game ends up arriving on PC VR and PSVR 2 at some point, because we all deserve top quality VR platforms. Do you love cleaning dirt covered environments in Power Wash Simulator VR? Does that kind of strange micromanagement attention to detail gameplay loop appeal to you? Well, good news! There's a new simulation game right around the corner that should quench your thirst for strange, relaxing escapist experiences. 
Lawn Mowing Simulator VR. With a selection of gardening tools, grass trimmers and ride on lawn mowers, this could be my new chill out VR obsession. Now I've pumped a scary amount of hours into Power Wash Simulator, so if this manages to replicate that same addictive gameplay loop, I'll be lost to meticulously cutting grass rather than cleaning endless piles of dirty stuff. The next time I talk about Madison VR, I'll be playing the game and showcasing some actual gameplay on this channel to promote its launch. At least I hope so, because I think this game has appeared in three or four of these new VR game roundup videos now, due to the fact it's been delayed and pushed back multiple times. Originally scheduled for Halloween or October of 2023, Madison VR has been pushed back one last time and will now be launching on the 23rd of March for PC VR and PSVR 2. I'm ultimately grateful that the developers have postponed the release to polish the game and make sure it's the very best it can and be, but damn I've been desperate to play this one. I loved the flat screen game and I think it could be truly terrifying in virtual reality. Here's hoping the game launches in a slick and impressive state, because after all these delays I'm sure players will be expecting a bug free and smooth experience from day one. Not long to wait now though, we'll all be crapping ourselves and cowering from blue knees in VR before the end of the month. Unless it gets delayed again. Let's hope not. I've never played the flat screen version of Medieval Dynasty, but the trailer for this new VR version has me very intrigued. This is a VR survival, hunting, crafting and combat focused RPG that lets players build homesteads, farm for crops, hunt animals for food and materials, defend their home from invaders and ultimately live out their medieval fantasies. It's unclear at this stage if the VR version will be as in-depth as the flat screen counterpart, but the trailer does showcase home building and even decorating the houses with various trinkets along with many of the systems and encounters that you typically see in the flat game. So hopefully this ends up being a fully fleshed out and content complete RPG experience. The only thing that isn't blowing me away in these trailers are the visuals. The game does look like it could use some enhancement and the visuals appear to be quite flat and uninspiring. However if that's the sacrifice that's needed to pack this RPG full of in-depth crafting and survival systems then that's a sacrifice I'm willing to accept. Medieval Dynasty New Settlement launches for the Quest on the 28th of March. The final new VR game that I wanted to showcase today is this brand new puzzle adventure from the developers behind Peaky Blinders. This is The Infinite Inside, a game that, at least on the Quest platform, blends mixed reality puzzle solving with a VR adventure that sees you interacting with elements in your own environments before shrinking down and entering into these worlds in full virtual reality. A mysterious monolith-like object appears in your home, transforming into a portal to an alternate reality filled with geometric impossibilities and mind-bending challenges. The premise sounds fantastic, but I'm unsure how the game will work when it launches for the PSVR 2, a system that has less than stellar black and white pass-through capabilities. Perhaps the PSVR 2 version will focus solely on the VR elements, with the game removing any MR sequences that show the monolith in your own environment. I'm sure Maze Theory have it all planned out, but it's an interesting one to see a game like this that could be wildly different across two different platforms due to the additional mixed reality features of the Quest 3 and Quest Pro. You can download a demo of the Infinite Inside right now from Quest App Lab ahead of full release taking place at the end of March. And that's everything for March 2024, or at the very least, that's everything that we currently know about at this moment in time. As always, please do let me know down in the comments which games you'll be picking up, tell me which games you're excited for, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care everyone, see you later.